All right, Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory due to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Makakwatash. I like to give double honors unto the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who I learned this truth from. And I like to say peace and salutations unto the hopefully elect. <coughs> Slock you in today. You know, I just want to go into, you know, yet again, you know, the nuclear missiles. You know, because again, you know, there's more and more information, you know, past and present, you know, that is being brought out. scriptures the Lord willing this lesson is how to find the straight to the point the nuclear age began in July 1945 when the United States successfully detonated the world's first atomic bomb it was an event that had a profound effect on its creators he knew the world would not be the same most people were silent I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture now I am become deaf destroyer of worlds. The following month, the United States dropped nuclear bombs on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The Hiroshima bomb killed over 100,000 people. Those bombings were also technically nuclear tests. Yeah, I'm just gonna stop right there for a second. You know, this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 54, and verse 16. It says, Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals and the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. And again, you know, pretty much what that, you know, the woman said, you know, that that was actually a test, you know, you know, fat boy and or fat man, a little boy, you know, those particular, you know, hydrogen bombs that were dropped on Nagasaki and Hiroshima, you know. <clears throat> and before I continue, I'm going to bring out the book of Revelation, chapter 13, and verse 13, and it says, He doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire to come it's like it, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and that you know was Esau Edom making fire to come down in the sight of men when he dropped those atomic bombs you know and then also you know his jets <coughs> that have missiles you know equipped to them as well so we're going to continue on the 20 kiloton bomb dropped on Nagasaki three days after Hiroshima was a different design it killed 74,000 more Japanese and provided the Americans more data on their new weapons capabilities. They were only the second and third nuclear weapons that had ever been built or detonated. The bombings of Japan um, were not simply acts of war. They were also experiments um, conducted by the United States to see what these weapons would do. ultra-modern plant outside Detroit plays host to military representatives of a dozen NATO nations. Here in two million square feet of floor space, parallel assembly lines turn out the Jupiter and the Redstone missiles. America is truly keeping pace in the missile age. But before a new nuclear weapon was integrated into the military arsenal, it had to be tested. The United States conducted over a thousand nuclear tests, more than all the other countries of the world combined when they went to test their weapons, they're not gonna test them next to their people who they care about. Uh, ideally, they're gonna test them out where, you know, people they don't care about are. The first location chosen for testing was the Marshall Islands, an American protectorate in the Central Pacific. And here is Bikini, nearly 4,000 miles from the United States, a tiny coral atoll destined for atomic bomb experiments. 
These first pictures of the little island show the 165 men, women, and children as they prepare for the move to another small island. This is where the term bikini, the swimsuit, comes from. So we have these sort of legacies even in our vocabulary of this weird period of sort of American nuclear culture and enthusiasm. In front of the palm thatched community house, an American naval officer through an interpreter discusses plans for moving the people. The people of Bikini are a happy people and they chat gaily with the Americans as they wait to leave. Modern dentistry brings only laughter. The Marshall Islanders, they were told that they were going to have to evacuate their islands for a short time and then be brought back. Instead, these bombs eliminated them. <coughs> Lucky. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 34, and verse 4. And it says, And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved. And the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. And all the host of heaven, it's like it, and all their hosts shall fall down. As the leaf falleth off from the vine, and as a falling fig from the tree, you know. And then this is Isaiah, you know, pretty much describing that mushroom cloud, you know. And again, John the Baptist, you know, is pretty much described the same thing. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 6, and verse 14. And it says, And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And yes, that's how devastating you know, the impact of these nuclear missiles are, you know. Continuing on. Their islands, they vaporized their island. They polluted the, the fishing grounds. But testing weapons so far from the continental United States was extremely expensive. So the U.S. government began searching for alternative sites closer to home. The decision was made to start testing nuclear weapons in Nevada, um, and that began in 1951. Over the next 40 years, roughly 800 underground tests of nuclear weapons will be conducted inside the U.S. But it's the above-ground tests at the Nevada test site, approximately 100 between 1951 and 1962, that will have the most devastating and lasting impact. Elaborate fake communities are built to replicate the impact of a nuclear bomb hitting an American town. The impact on actual Americans is not as elaborately planned. And from the end of World War II until today, the overwhelming majority of people killed by American atomic bombs will be Americans. What the atomic energy chapter 51 and verse 1 and it says thus said the Lord behold I will raise up against Babylon and against them that dwell in the midst of them that raise like you, that rise up against me a destroying wind and I will send unto Babylon fanners that shall fan her and shall empty her land for in the day of trouble they shall be against her round about. And yes, you know, the <clears throat> point I want to focus on is in verse 1, you know, that destroying wind. And it is, as you can see, you know, the impact of, you know, that replica town that they made, you know, was showing how devastating just the wind alone can be. <coughs> Slocky. <Slack here. coughs> you know, because again, it's, it's, it's extremely detonated. I said detonated, but <laughs> it's extremely devastating, you know. 
but that's exactly how much you know that's how powerful these weapons are you know but again that was just you know in the late 40s 50s and 60s you know from the late 40s up until the 1960s you know and then the weapons have gotten you know more advanced since then so I'm going to get to you all. The commission knew at this point is that these tests would release massive amounts of radiation and that that radiation would drift with the wind. And so the decision was made to aim these tests. And the way they did that was by monitoring weather conditions and meteorological conditions and testing nuclear weapons only when the wind was blowing east, so away from Las Vegas and densely populated California. So a deliberate engineering took place. The fact remains this fallout wasn't falling on empty land. The Nevada test site is about 100 miles as the crow flies to the south of us, probably even less than that to the areas where weapons testing took place. Ian Zabarte is a leading member of the Western bands of the Shoshone Nation of Indians and an activist who's on a mission to bring justice to his people for the horrors that had befallen them when America declared their sacred land ground zero. These Shoshone elders have never before told their stories on camera. I slept in the house on a, on a couch that was in the living room, and the living room faced to the south. Here are three reasons why I switched to Native's new deodorant and body sprays. First, they're aluminum and And I can remember one morning being woke before dawn. Everything was just bright and brilliant. Whatever it was, it was so almost impossible to see it was so bright. And it was one of the, the experiments. We were alarmed when we saw this great big dust coming from our southern side. And it was just a great, big, big rolling dust storm like coming into duck water. And my mom and dad told us that fallout, that's that atomic bomb they let off. As I get older, I notice that several of the family members here in duck water have cancer. And so exposure to fallout, you know, in any form, the consequences are basically parts of your body die, and significant exposure means more parts of it die, eventually to the point where the cells can't reproduce themselves, or they reproduce in a way that's mutated and that leads to a cancer. And in places with high contamination, you know, there's a legacy of, of a cancer history that never would have existed in the absence of nuclear weapons testing. Then just to side note, you know, for those that don't know, so-called Native Americans, you know, they are Israelites and they are of the tribe of Gad. You know, these people that are featured, the two women, you know, that man, you know, they're Gadites. You know, you know they on the bay, you know, for the wickedness that he had done, you know, for Gad, the nation of Israel as a whole, but you know, primarily, you know, Gad and Ruben because America was their land to begin with. They had to play out. Before I continue, again, just to, you know, if any new brothers and sisters may come across this video, again, this is just a reminder of who runs this world, you know. This is the book of Job, chapter 9, and verse 24, and it says, The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? And the wicked being Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, you know. He is the wicked. He runs the world. He's, you know, been conducting these nuclear tests. You know, <coughs> just in America alone, you know, between, you know, the 50s and 60s. And as you can see, you know, the effects of that nuclear fallout, you know, I gave those people cancer, you know, so again, Esau, he's going to pay for this wickedness, you know. 
The health of people in these communities was seen as an acceptable sacrifice by the Atomic Energy Commission in order to have a larger and more sophisticated nuclear weapons arsenal. To fall behind any other nation in atomic progress is a national risk. And so when people from the downwind area went to the AEC and said, why didn't you warn us? The Atomic Energy Commission said things like, we have to make sacrifices in order to protect democracy. Yeah. And that's wicked, you know, because he knew, again, there were Gerdites out there, probably other, you know, people as well, but still, you know, they have to make sacrifices. So they wanted to see, you know, what these nuclear pretty much what the radiation would do to people. So, you know, he did it on purpose, you know. They knew what this weapon was going to do. You know, he knew exactly the effect it was going to have on people. But again, like it says in Job, you know, the earth is giving it to the hand of the wicked, you know. That was a wicked act, you know. He didn't want those people to flee, you know. Instead, he just detonated, you know, that bomb and allow, you know, the radiation to contaminate them, you know? The very nature of testing weapons for national defense requires we accept the possibility of some exposure to additional radiation. But the Western Shoshone sacrificed both their blood and treasure for America's nuclear industrial complex. The first thing to keep in mind about the Nevada testing site is that it's actually legally the property of the Western Shoshone Nation was deeded to them in the 1863 Treaty of Ruby Valley, and they have never actually ceded that land. And again, you know, Esau, you know, he made treaties with Gad, you know, just to break them. You know, he's done this for a long time. You know, he had promised Gad that he would do, you know, certain things just to end up doing the complete opposite. So it's like she said, you know, that nuclear testing site was actually, you know, that land actually belonged to Gad, but, you know, they took it and conducted these nuclear tests on that land, you know. According to the Treaty of Ruby Valley, the Western Shoshone land stretched for nearly 100,000 square miles, covering much of Nevada and into California, Idaho, and Utah. But with the advent of the nuclear age in 1945, the United States began forcing the tribe off their land, creating a vast patchwork of high security military installations. And again, forced Gad off of their land, you know, this wickedness. This is the violence of colonialism, which is really fundamental to the, the birth of the nuclear age. The Western bands of the Shoshone Nation of Indians are the most bomb nation in the world. It was mass destruction of our world, really. It was just being destroyed forever. And you can actually see the scars of this. If you go on and look at satellite pictures, it looks like the moon. It's all craters. I'm trying to get back to where my ancestors are from, and I can't because these people have decided to kill my land and people. And again, you know, Esau is the wicked. <coughs> you know. So before I continue, I'm gonna just bring this up. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 49, and verse 19. And it says, Gad, a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. So yes, you know, all the wickedness, you know, that Esau Edom has done just to the tribe of Gad alone, you know, Gad is gonna get his revenge. Gad is going to overcome Esau, you know, all of the tribes, but again, you know, He's done a lot of ill things to the tribe of Gad, you know. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go to the book of 
Malachi chapter 4 and verse 1. And it says, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day cometh that shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts. It shall leave them neither root nor branch. And yes, you know, once World War Three happens and those missiles get launched, you know, the majority of them are going to hit America. And America is going to be left completely desolate, you know. <coughs> Nothing will be left here. Because, you know, the Lord has you know, indignation with this place, you know, that righteous anger, because again, this is the, the, pretty much the center of wickedness throughout the world, you know, because again, America pushes this philosophies and doctrines all over the world, you know, to these other nations. <coughs> so there's the book of Second Peter, chapter three and verse 10 and it says but the day of the lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat the earth also and the works therein shall be burned up <coughs> you know and again that's what's coming and these missiles are going to be burning so hot you know they're going to burn hotter than the sun you know, the sun is 15 million degrees Celsius. These missiles are going to burn at 100 million degrees Celsius. You know, that is 75 million degrees hotter than the sun. You know, that's how devastating those missiles are going to be. Fervent, you know, again, that extreme heat and that heat is going to be extreme, you know. For those that haven't seen the movie Terminator 2, or those that are, you know, the scene with Sarah Connor, where she had the dream, where she was burned, you know, by nuclear missiles, and she was on fire, you know, because again, it's a very, very serious thing, you know, because this is what's coming to this earth, you know, the Lord is angry with the wicked every day, you know, but again, just to clarify that this is extremely serious you know this is one of the weapons that the Lord is going to use to judge this place you know this is the book of Zechariah chapter 14 and verse 12 and it says and this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem their flesh their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. And yes, that's pretty much describing what's going to happen once those missiles hit. Those people are engulfed in flames, you know, and it's going to melt them, you know. It's like it says, their flesh is going to consume away. So while people are standing upon their feet, they're literally going to be melted, you know. Because, you know, people are elements. Everything around us is elements. You know, everything is going to be burned. It's going to be melted. You know. <coughs> this is how serious this is. You know. This is extremely serious. And again, they just published that video, you know, seven hours ago came out earlier and I thought it was you know a good thing to go into it because again could never not bring out enough information about the Lord's indignation you know because he's going to use these missiles his spirit is going to be in these missiles and also when he returns you know the chariots you know with the angels he's also going to you know destroy this place <clears throat> with the chariots as well the fire from the chariots uh, and then I'm going to end on this. That's the book of Isaiah, chapter 24, and verse 20. 
and said the earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall be removed like a cottage and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it and it shall fall and not rise again yes once america goes down it will never rise again no this place will never be rebuilt no man will ever inhabit this land again you know i was going to end it on that but i'm going to end it on this This is the book of Revelation, chapter 20, and verse 14. And it says, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Now, yes, you know, again, Esau Edom is also known as death, you know, but again, hell, you know, there's no such thing as hell, you know. As, you know, hell has different meanings, you know, it can mean ultimately, you know, the grave. It can mean, you know, a low estate, you know, but it's no place underground that's burning with fire, you know, where Satan and the demons are, like, no, it's not what it's talking about, you know, but again, <clears throat> death and hell were cast into the lake of fire, you know. The lake of fire is going to be America, you know, engulfed in flames by those nuclear missiles, you know, because just like the Lord judged the entire world, you know, the first time by way of the flood, you know, he made a covenant with Noah by way of the rainbow that he would never destroy the earth with water again, you know, but again, in that covenant, you know, it's pretty much a sign as well. Because the rainbow is also in a, you know, a shape like an arc or an arch, you know, but yet, you know, it is pretty much symbolic of how the Lord is going to judge, you know, the world again a second time. Only this time, you know, the entire world isn't going to be destroyed, you know, just one particular land is going to be left completely desolate and you know, other lands are going to be hit because, again, the earth is polluted, you know, so it has to be cleansed. And water and fire are cleansing agents, you know. So the first death was the flood of water, you know, and the second death is going to be the lake of fire, you know, death by thermonuclear missiles, you know. And this is serious because this is what's going to come upon this earth, you know, it's inevitable is going to happen so you know first and foremost speaking to myself you know we have to take this extremely seriously because again that's one judgment that no one should want but there is millions of people that are going to get it you know so lord will let this lesson was edifying i want to give all praise honor and glory to tiahawah bahashem yahweh shai bahashem rakaha kutash I like to give double honors unto the apostles and the artists of great millstone who are learned this truth from. And I like to say peace and salutations unto the hopeful elect. Till the next time I see you, Shalom.